So here we are in Sigma plot version 13 and we're going to make ourselves a very simple line graph where we have an x axis with numerical information maybe relating to time or, or dose of a drug and then we're going to have y data consisting of an average of a number of data points. So for instance we might have data at time 0, 1 minute, 2 minutes, 3 minutes and 4 minutes. A feature that SigmaPlot offers is the ability to label each of these columns. So by right-clicking on column 1 and choosing column titles, I can call column 1 x-axis in brackets time. For instance, this would be my time. And press apply. And you can see now it says x-axis time. Columns 2, 3, 4 and 5, let's say, will be our four replicate data points. So column 2 will input the data points from our first experiment. So these are our data and I'm just making up random numbers here. So now we've got a single x-axis at times 0 through to 4 and then we've got an n of 4 replicates. And if you want to, you can label each of these as well. So you can call this one column titles and call this group A. Once you've created the data set you want to create a graph from this so we click on create graph. We want some error bars we want the software to calculate the average or the mean of these four data points and assign them as an average as a single point on our graph and then we also want it to calculate the standard deviation. So rather than just choose a standard line graph or a standard scatter graph, we will choose a combination line scatter. The fifth option here, it says underneath, is a simple line and scatter with error bars. So that's what we want to create. So let's click on that one. Immediately it's brought up some options. So you can see here it's creating a graph where the values are row means, I like the sound of that, and the standard deviation is plus or minus. Let's have a look and see what options we've got in the values. Well, we've got columns, asymmetric, column means, row means, etc. Well, we want row means because we've got different rows in columns 2, 3, 4 and 5 representing different time points. So we choose row means with the standard deviation upper and lower. Just for this example, let's change this to standard error on upper and lower and click on next. Now it's asking how the data are formatted. And you have a choice. The data can either be X with replicates of Y or simply no X and just replicates of Y. But since we have X values, we have time values, we want to choose the first option. And you'll see in the left hand side it says one X column and one Y replicate set. And that's what columns two through five are. They're a replicate set. So we click on next. It's asking us where our X data is now going to come from, and that's coming from the first column. It's then saying, where is the data for the start of the set coming from? We know the data are inputted into 2 through to 5, so we click on 2, and it's asking us where the end comes from, so we click on 5. So the data is taken from 2, which is A, 5, D. So we're happy with that now. We know that the x values from column 1 and we know that the y values come from column 2 through to 5. So now we can click on finish. You can see it's created a graph for us on the screen. Let's just zoom into that slightly. And you can see it's labeled the x value x data and you can see it's incrementing from 0 through to 5. We only had data from 0 to 4 so we can always reduce this in a minute. And it's plotted our mean values with our standard error in this case on each of the values. So we can label this accordingly. With our measure and our units and our x value in this case can be time and let's just say it's in seconds. We can delete this little legend because we only have one data set so we'll choose to hide that and we can choose to hide the boxes. We may also choose to change 
the scale of this bottom line to get rid of this rather awkward number 5. We don't have a minus 1 either, so maybe we want to change the scale from minus a half to four and a half. We'll simply double click on the line and then we can choose the scale here. It's saying that the scale starts at minus 0.9, let's change that to minus 0.5 and let's end it at 4.5 and press close. You can now see it's rescaled this line so it now starts where we want and finishes where we want and I think that looks a lot neater. So now we've created a very simple line graph where we can compare these five data points. In other tutorials we've looked at statistical analysis and an appropriate analysis for this data set would be a one-way ANOVA. However, the way we have entered the data in the format we have entered it isn't suitable for one-way ANOVA in its current format. To change its format we need to have these in columns because the one-way ANOVA that runs within this software won't allow for comparison of rows. So if I choose all the data set and choose copy, go to column number 7 and choose transpose paste, you can now see that it's pasted each of the time points into separate columns. This hasn't changed our data because our graph is still plotted from the data sets in columns 1 to 5. Now if we want to, we can relabel these columns as time 0. So we've relabeled these columns 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. And now we can do the statistical analyses on this data set. We choose one way ANOVA from the drop down list and select run. We are entering raw data, so we click on next. And we choose the data sets 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. Click on finish. It failed a normality test because I've entered uh, my own made up data and of course the end number is quite low. But we're going to carry on running the one way ANOVA test and we're going to choose in this case a two keys comparison test where we're comparing all data sets. And we press finish. This will bring up a one way ANOVA report where we can go down and we can choose which data we want to have a look at, for instance. So you can see here that 4 versus 0 it's found is statistically significant and 4 versus 1 it hasn't and there you can see where it has not tested the data it's because it's failed its normality test. Of course this is made up data so you might expect it to fail a normality test. So now we can go back to our graph and we could go to the graph page using the text annotation we could add stars to the appropriate changes and annotate these accordingly making sure we add those to our legend. So that's how we do a very simple graph comparing four time points versus a zero time point when we're measuring something which is continuous data.